All right, guys, it's Honey Cafe here again, Elm Grove Epiary, October 16th. It's on a Tuesday, 2024. This is the single dose right here that I bought. Much more expensive that way, but I bought it probably so it expires. 2023, you see that? So it expired. 14 months ago. Of course, it's been sitting in the refrigerator uh, next to some pollen patties that I haven't used in a while. I've, I haven't used pollen patties in years, but I, I keep all that in the refrigerator, even this stuff, because I've kept it in my garage before and had the whole thing expand and basically uh, go bad because of the heat. I don't know if putting it in the refrigerator prolongs the uh, life or if it affects it anyway, but that's where I keep it. So, regardless, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use both of this together in case it's not as effective as a half treatment. It might be. I don't really know. We're going to find out. Anyway, let me work through all this. These are the other two that I have here. And uh, let's get going. I will move the uh, camera around a little bit. I think I'm going to save this for this last hive. Uh, all right. I also got my tape. down if I saw any breed or not. Uh, it's this uh the white duct tape. I don't like it as much. Even the red or the, the black, it just doesn't, uh, not, as, not as good as the old stuff, but I mean, it just doesn't tear the way I want it to tear. Yeah, kind of irritating. Uh, tell you what, I'm, I'm going to do all these today, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the 16th. This fun. Last year I used, uh, I had a whole package of like 10 treatments on a big box. It expired a month before I used it. I kept those in the uh, refrigerator too. And uh, it did a good job. All, the, all my bees survived. It might have been 20 treatments. I can't remember. All right. So I don't want to open the uh, strips yet. Let's come around. It's right looking in the sun. Let's start off with this one. But just a little bit. Oh, yeah. There we go. 
Give me a little lift there. Tell you what, that sign is right to my left. I can remember to keep this was the one. Got to be inspired. I like a little note. Expired strips. Time two. Alright. See how I can drag this out. It's uh man, it's it's cooler. It's really the best time to do it. There's still a lot of goldenrod out. So I'm hoping to get fall honey. Go ahead and open this now. It's So I will look at those supers and Okay, that's pretty stout. Need to replace this box. Need to fix this box. So I have to buy like a couple of hundred boxes just just to replace the boxes. All right, they're stuck. They're pretty good. cold so there's a window right you, you need to be to use those strips I don't know if my head's in the shot or not but you need it to be under 85 degrees outside it's been 86 and a little bit higher I'm cooling down pretty quick but it'll be like 86 for an hour or two but you also need it to be above I think 55 degrees so like a few days ago, it was 100 degrees, like for a little while. But when I was doing this, I saw it was going to be like 90, 90 degrees, and then quickly below 85. So I kind of took a gamble. And now it's going to be 49. It's like, like it's just Louisiana weather, man. It's just the weirdest thing. Uh, let's see. I'll tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and. Crack this a little bit. If I don't see brood in here, I'm probably still going to treat for mites. See what kind of frames I have here. I didn't bring any extra frames as far as frames with comb. It's like a lot of bees.
Let me show you an example here. Uh, let me go on the camera. This is what I talked about. So, you see here how this has got this space and this top leans forward over time. When you put these together, you actually need to use glue in all the spaces, as well as, come on bees, get off, as well as a uh, nail or a screw or a staple. Same here. So what happens over time is as it leans forward, the space between the shelf, the lip, underneath here, on the other side gets further, I'm trying to use my hands, it gets further apart. And so these, these, these frames will start to uh, slip off. This one here is broken. But as that front wall gets further out, the frames will start to kind of slip off. And then it creates, instead of the top being here, it'll be down a little bit further at an angle. And then the space between the top here and the bottom of the frames up here is larger. So they build a lot more of this burr cone. Place. These uh, frames are all designed to have the, the perfect amount of space that you need for bee space for bees to either ignore it or pay attention to it. Or leave it alone. If they have to pay a lot of attention to it, they're going to build something on it. It'll make things harder. Things will stick together more. I'm getting nervous about what I'm seeing. You see right here, like this lift that came off. Probably because I'm messing with it. The box feels light. this a little bit because I, I got these space thinking they'll draw a comb out on the foundation and they didn't that's not good this isn't this isn't good I just totally forgot to clean alright so this is what I'm talking about like right here you see how it's falling down so I'm gonna need to hammer that back so it'll sit right because basically the bottom of the frame there is gonna be sitting on the baseboard I'm not gonna worry about it right now as much I can't fix it right now and what I'll do is I'll bring another box out we got a like, walkie call. This might, this might not be you. Dude. This is not a good sign. They might be in the top box. What's we'll that? Thank you. 
some larva right there that I'm not really I'm not gonna... This salad is not looking good. It's like that. I don't even know it. bringing frames out all the time. This is, this is one of my more difficult uh, apiaries to come, come to because uh, the homeowner's house is just right there. And switch the, the order, put this on the bottom and this on top, if I even keep that. Since I'm treating for mice, you, know, you, you can put an extra box on there to help with giving them a place to kind of get away from the vapors and kind of Honey. This is the edge on the outside. I'm gonna leave this right here. But remember, 
I've had that, that one hive that I went through pretty detailed. No brood that I could see whatsoever. I couldn't see any eggs or larvae. And then like a week later, it was packed full of brood. That's one of the hives I have over there at the Green Egg area. Kind of looks like more of the same. You got there. This cap. Got several of them. I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't give up just yet. Some breed here. Here we go. A little bit. On top there, or the bottom. A little bit on that side. Let me see if I see a queen. I probably just shoot her. I think what I want to do is switch the place to these boxes. Because this looks like a bunch of comb. And it feels like. I have an eternal fear. I'm going to put it over here. I got plenty of syrup. This is coming down, it's, it's, it's hitting it's right here. You can see the wax, the cone right there. All right, ladies.
that's poor. Another example of poor hob management. I should have seen those cones. Not had that many of that kind, but all that brick, hard brick looking. I got a bunch of bees right here. I'm just gonna grab them up. Put this most of the caps part on this outside here. All right. Have a treatment. I'm kind of cleaning this off a little bit. This was a hive. I, I tried to split several of these hives. I started out with five. Split three of them. And then lost. Three, uh, three hives. Also, the space between the... It's going to be hard to make that close.
like a real scientist over here. All right, let's see what we got here. See? You see all this like Vercom? Yeah, you can take that with you and do neat stuff with it. So, man, a few minutes, good grief. For that one Fire I'm not going to take all this one. I don't want to leave it right here to attract the mm -hmm. small high beam or something like that. I need to make sure I don't have any reduced going on. I do.
screwed in this one. See how this weaves forward? You have to propolize all that up. Go ahead and do this, because if I have to change the box. See lots of bees down in there. So if there's brood in here, I'll leave it there. I'm gonna put the strip there. And then, make sure I can see what I'm feeling here. Put this box back on. I'll leave it. This box is light. Not much. I mean, with a spring, it's good. The room is the middle of the hive. The inside the side of the uh, room. I see the queen trying to lay eggs in here. It's just a video of the queen recently. Stay right there while you look at them. Just stay on the frame. Get on the brood. 
right here, but there's all kinds of larvae up in there. I can see it all up in there. All right. thing Let's see Get off. kind of zoom in you see how it's leaning forward right here this corner it's doing that all across the front and so when rain hits the box it slides down and it seeps into the size tight. And so the bees have to work on purpleizing all that up. But it just leaves more exposure to the inside of the hive. I don't think I have any more. Nope. Took them off because I last a few weeks ago. Nitro in it. Let's see that too. 
Oh, I got so much more dexterity. But yeah. And you, all your dexterity, you lose it. When your hands are swollen. So I'm talking like in the front, water hits it just down. And it's just there, it's a lot of This is a hide I bought from the house. This is a Saskatraz bead right here. There's propolis all in these gaps where the lip is coming. Hold her pretty quick.
time's up. Started. A lot of breed there. A lot of... all the queens. Now as far as when I'm going to do it every year, I don't know. It won't be during this time. Start doing that. I think I'll have better luck. I thought I opened it. I thought I opened it. Unscented. I feel like banana is the best scent. Get the banana scented scooper sheet. Preferably the wild, spicy banana or angry, angry banana scented scooper sheet. Take a video. Let me know how much better your bees become a protective hive. Because they will uh, show you. Don't do that. Yeah. This is 
the super. It's obviously higher. This is the same height as the rest of them because it's lower. So I wasn't thinking super. Well, that's super. Let me see. It doesn't look like a harvesting time. And it smells. I finally made that noise. And it just kind of looks, not a lot of bees in there. smells terrible <laughs> and I'm hoping that's because it's the goldenrod. Every year it throws me off. He knows, I mean, I think it's the best taste of honey. There's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of nectar in here. A lot of bees up here, but then again, the population is uh, dwindling. There's eight frames set up in a tin frame box. a lot of nectar in there it's not capped so you can see it shine in there quite a bit of nectar Got a lot of nectar in here. They're going to cap this off. Just going to clean this up a little bit. These spaces between the frames, they, got, they all got bees in them. They're not bowling over. The next box below will be that way. Nice. 
All right. A lot of bees here. One, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Frames all on the side here. Looks like they're full. Just smoke them a little bit. You know, you feel them all around you. You got your bee suit on. You're like, man, is it making any difference at all? Foundation. beetle. I don't like this as much. You, use it. you can't mash it because that little hook on the end keeps you from like getting it straight on there. So I'm just going to check for brood. I feel, I'm pretty confident there's brood in here. So confident I'm going to work. Uh, so this is my first apiary outside of my house, or my dad's house. And some of these bees have been here, this hive has been here for a while, and it does not look like... Well, I've missed the splits too. tell if I've tried to rotate some, some frames from dead outs. That's probably what that other one was. I looked at that, I thought black crap. Probably a slime. That's probably what that was. Alright. No brood. On the outside over here. I thought I expected brood here. Oh, 
get this crap up there. Oh, I got to some brood. Not much. Just brood there. I see a queen. Nope. They're not touching the, the, the foundation here. That's why some guys will wax their foundation to keep that from happening. I'm going to leave that alone. I see that's all brood. So if this outside frame here is all comb and has or has comb on it, I'm gonna take one of these. I have two over here that didn't have anything on there. That way I can kind of push the brood and the cluster back more towards the middle of the frame from left to right. So I might as well just kind of inspect a little bit. Some of these hives, there's no food. They can starve themselves, they can eat their own. Like cannibals, they can eat their brood. I guess I need to learn to recognize that. That just requires earlier intervention to even feed them. Take their honey. I'm not taking any honey right now. I'm gonna put this on the outside. Actually, this one's just got a little bit home right there. I think it'll have something to use.
All right, so I've shifted the hive a little bit. Something this great. This is this is actually one of my better better highs as far as our apiaries. As far as taste. This is This one is getting both. The full thing. banana uh, oh. yeah no. oh man it don't look the same it's, it's it looks like the older older uh versions of it that's what it is I mean it's a few years old remember it expired a year ago. I probably bought it two years before it expired. They've come out with some different strips, but they're still effective. And they're not cheap, so I'm not going to waste it. That's what, that's kind of how you can, some people can describe golden rod. Let me 
you just check? A lot of nectar. You see some small high beetles in there. But there's a lot of nectar. Some honey. Cover with bees. Of course, as the night goes, or as the day gets longer and gets closer to sunset, more bees are coming in. Like a lot of bees down there. Let me. Sorry, guys. I want to walk you around this way. So you see all this, these bees coming out in the front. That's from the uh, the vapors. See the bottom? Yeah, you can see the bottom there, alright. That looks pretty good to me. I don't know what time it is. I'm going to say it's about 4. 30 maybe. So dry comb, but this comb, the sea beetle's going in there. Foundation. So if I'd brought some other frames out here, I'd have brought some frames from other hives that I stuck in the freezer that have nectar and comb and honey. And I'd replace all of these that have this foundation. I'll, I'll look at doing that when I come out here for the next, next treatment. But that foundation's on the outside, so that's kind of one of the last ones to get worked on. Dry comb. Dry comb. How does it feel? This feels a little bit light. Lots of brood. Looking for the queen. I see a lot of brood though. So, a lot of brood here. A lot of brood there. 
Kind of look again for the queen, see if I see her walking around. She'll probably be right there. I'll probably pull her out of the box. Yeah, you know, I always do that. I like that in real life too. I, I, I shouldn't be that way. Be hard on myself. But really, I'm kind of laughing at myself. It's not really be, being hard on myself, but I am pretty hard. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. So what I would do next year, when, they, when the honey flows on, I would move this from like more toward the middle so, and hope they would start adding comb to that side. But I'm not gonna turn this around now and hope they build this up. Because they're not likely going to. Just dropped a splinter down. Well, sorry guys. Now this is a front. This is a screen bottom board. <laughs> I remember uh, when I first got started. Like I'm on. I got two two more hives. Now I'm gonna do nothing but screen bottom boards and telescope and tops. Perfect frames. Perfect boxes. And then I started buying like five sets at a time. Like, man, how about we go back to the migratory top? And just normal bottom boards. I didn't see any difference in the way they uh, were with the mites or anything like that. You know, I tried it all. I failed at it all, I succeeded with it all. Or you succeed for one season or two seasons, and you fail again. You're gonna lose your hives. But, okay, so, it's a full treatment, front third, put in the back of that, the back third, and the front of the front of the, in the front of the back third. So they still have all the space, they can come up and down. It's not as closed off. I don't know if this stuff irritates the small hive beetles or not. It's not made for small hive beetles. You're not, I don't think you're gonna see any kind of decrease in your small hive beetle population. Because of the, as a result of the formic acid doing anything other than making the mite population less and making the, the hive stronger. But what I would like to think is that it at least bothers them, like it bothers me when I smell it. And so they're just in there, the beetles. Constantly being annoyed with the strips, and that would that would give me some happiness. All right, let's smoke this thing off. But it, it, you know, it is what it is. It's pretty light. They can do a lot in a few weeks. I'll leave it in the hive. They can take and do what they want with it. I want to make my hive top a little bit easier to open. Because there's more This trap looks like it's full. Let me see. Just gonna 
propolis down. I don't have time to tear all the propolis off to open it up. There's no cooking oil in there. I was saying I was just gonna leave it in there. I miss resources. The bees can they can figure out where to put it. There's quite a bit of room left on the. It's got a lot of small high beetles on here. But uh, so I don't want to mess with it. If it was nasty, I would. I'll take it off. But I want to add a little bit more protection. Angry wild, spicy banana scent. If you know why that's funny, say something. I say lots of jokes in here. I mean, if you don't think they're funny. Doing a very good job portraying, but banana is a scent that uh, you will smell when your bees are getting angry. So if you're working with a bunch of bees and you think you think like, man, this smells like bananas, they're fixing to get angry and they're releasing their pheromone. they're gonna come after you. And uh, you've seen me uh, at least here complaining, like I'm getting stung a little bit in between my, my suit. It's not as bad as getting stung barehanded. But you get these bees enough uh, reason. We'll sting you through your suit for sure. Every one of these bees you see land on me right now would be stinging me if I didn't have the suit on. Every one of them. I don't care what you say. So, if you don't have your suit on and you, you smell bananas for sure, you're going, you're going to get stung a whole lot more. But with your suit on, do not think that you're invincible. They'll find a they'll find a hole somewhere that you didn't know about in your suit, and they'll show all their friends, all their neighbors, all their sisters. Positive brood. Crow. Danger, corrosive to skin and eyes. Definitely. Legro. Danger. Yeah, you don't want to get it on your. I don't like getting it on my gloves. Alright. Get on a trash in one spot. So, what you're going to see me do here is kind of collecting things.
I'm probably going to, if I, I think I got some mop and shears. I'm going to trim that back a little bit. I'll pick up this trash. Do a little bit more work with this grass right here. And then do a recap. Let me see if I was able to. How long that took me? One hour and 32 minutes. Not too bad, not too bad. Back up here. All right, guys. Let me uh, let me do all that, and I'll do a recap real quick. Thanks for watching, guys.